Hello friends. This is Revenger What If. How are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto had the legendary power of Fox's Crimson Devil. Here is short summary. Naruto and Sasuke are forced away from their home, it is up to them to get help or accept their new world. They must solve their problems with the help of a pervert and a devil king. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Naruto was standing in front of a woman with long, white hair, lavender eyes, and two horns that made her look like a snow rabbit. This woman's name will forever be remembered in time as Kagaya Otsutsuki. Naruto gritted his teeth and looked over at his partner, Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke, we cannot allow her to draw out this fight any more than she has already. Naruto said. I know that Dobi, I have an idea. Sasuke commented. Do you think it may work? Naruto asked. I don't know but it's better than just going in half cocked. Sasuke said. All right, I'll follow your lead, Sasuke. Naruto crossed his fingers and created a shadow clone. Wait for my signal. Sasuke shouted as he started. Right, Naruto replied. Sasuke built up chakra in his Rinnegan as he rushed towards the pale-eyed woman. Mother. Black Zetsu shouted. The sound of 1,000 birds was heard. Naruto and Kaguya's eyes widened as Sasuke's left hand had lightning covering his hand as black flames were combining with it. Sasuke shoved his hand into Kaguya's shoulder and shouted. Uchiha Amaterasu Chidori. No jutsu. When the hell did Sasuke create that? Naruto shouted in his mind. Kaguya grunted as she felt Sasuke's arm pierce her right shoulder. Now Dobi. Let's finish this, Sasuke shouted. Right, Naruto flew there in a matter of seconds. Naruto almost put his hand on Kaguya's shoulder but she teleported with them. Naruto was forced to the ground as he felt his chakra leave him, Sasuke was thrown next to him as Kaguya floated up. You dare attack me, Kaguya shouted, raising her hand. Kaguya was about to throw her huge attack at the two teens before a massive object covered in armor hit her. Nice going Sasuke. Naruto shouted, A Suzano oil. Sasuke asked himself out loud. Wait, that's not yours? Naruto tilted his head. No, Dobi, when I make the Suzano oil, I can't leave it. Sasuke said, Oh, Naruto deadpanned. Sasuke took a closer look at the head to find Kakashi and Sakura. How the hell? Sasuke shouted, eyes becoming saucers. Kakashi grabbed Sasuke and Naruto and said, Now's not the time to think about it Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke looked back at Kagaya to find a giant rabbit. What the shit? Naruto finished Sasuke's sentence. Naruto just sighed and looked at Sasuke. Any more bright ideas, Teme? Naruto ordered an answer. Shut up Baka and focus. Sakura screeched. Flashback and Naruto and Sasuke were standing huffing as a beam of energy was shot at them. Naruto and Sasuke ran full speed as Naruto threw his kunai at Kagaya. Sasuke built chakra up and switched places with it. Naruto grabbed the kunai from the air and threw it at her again. The spectacle looked astonishing. Sasuke saw the kunai and instantly knew Naruto's plan and smirked. In a matter of milliseconds Naruto was holding Kaguya's shoulder along with Sasuke. This is for what you did to Sakura. Naruto yelled. C-H-I-B-A-K-U Tensai. Naruto and Sasuke yelled together. How can these children defeat me? Kagaya thought as rocks started to pull her up and surround her. You will not get away with this, you brats. Kagaya lifted her free hand and opened a portal under the two teens. It was as if it was slow motion but he could see Kakashi holding Sakura's corpse yell out for the two before being enveloped in darkness. Naruto and Sasuke were gone. Where did that woman take those two? Kakashi yelled. Bakashi your time is almost up, use the rest of your chakra to get home via Kamui. Obito from beyond the grave said. Without a further thought, Kakashi, holding Sakura, vanished in a portal. With Naruto and Sasuke, Tem, where are we? Naruto asked as he saw trees. Dobi, we're in a forest. Sasuke hissed out. Well obviously Tem, but did Kagaya send us back home? Naruto growled. I don't feel any chakra, especially the god tree. Naruto looked up to find a normal looking moon. Um Sasuke, the infinite Tsukuyomi isn't active. Sasuke hearing this looks up to see the same thing. What the hell? 
We are the only ones to turn it off. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. Naruto, it may be possible that we aren't in our world. Naruto's eyes widened at this then smirked. Come on, Sasuke, didn't know you could joke. Naruto started to chuckle. Well I can't be sure but I suggest you get out of your chakra mode, just in case. Sasuke said. Naruto deactivated his chakra cloak and ran with Sasuke for what seemed like minutes till they heard a battle going on. Sasuke held his hand as he looked at what seemed to be two high schoolers training. Naruto saw a boy who looked to be his age with short blonde hair, blue eyes, and a mole under his left eye holding a sword that looked like it was straight from a fairy tale. Naruto then saw a short girl with white hair with two cat clips holding it together, golden eyes, and two distinct cat ears and tail. She was attacking the blonde who was dodging her. The girl spoke in a monotone voice, Kiba-kun, you want me to go harder? She asked. Kiba nodded and said. I need to get stronger, for my goal I need it. Sasuke chuckled to himself when he heard that, it reminded him of him introducing himself to a certain blonde, Pinket, and Cyclops. Naruto looked at Sasuke and said, we need to watch them for now and follow them into town. Naruto said, you remind me of the Hyuga girl that stalked you in our youth. Sasuke said, causing Naruto to raise an eyebrow. What the hell are you talking about? No Hyuga girl was near me in my youth except Hinata-chan but she was always sick. Naruto tilted his head. You're still as dense as ever, it doesn't matter. What matters is we get more information on where we ended up. Sasuke said. The hell is he talking about? Naruto thought and turned to see the two students leaving. Let's go, conceal that damn furball. Sasuke said. What did that Uchiha bastard call me? Kurama yelled. I'm not repeating that Kurama, I like being alive. Naruto told his partner. TCH, whatever but the Uchiha is correct on his theory, I don't sense any chakra. Kurama said as he laid his head down on his paws. Damn, is there a way to get back? Naruto asked Kurama as he was following the duo. I don't know but be wary of where you two are heading, I sense power signatures below you but still powerful. Naruto's eyes widened but nodded. Naruto just looked at Sasuke and sighed. Sasuke, Kurama said to be wary of these two. Naruto whispered. Dumbass I said the entire town, Naruto winced. Naruto cut the connection between him and Kurama. Naruto saw a school enter the view and raised an eyebrow as Sasuke looked at him. Naruto looked at the sign in front of it saying, Kuo Academy, Sasuke figured it out once he saw the sign. Naruto, this is an academy. Naruto nodded and said, We aren't in Konoha anymore, are we? Naruto sighed. Naruto and Sasuke soon found a place to set up camp as he placed tents out of the scrolls Naruto had. Since when did you know about Fuenjutsu? Sasuke asked, confused. Since Jiraiya Sensei died, it was a way of honoring him. Naruto said as he placed a kettle down on a freshly made fire. HN. Seems there's more to you than meets the eye, Naruto. A robot truck from a different universe sneezed. Naruto chuckled. When did you care? Sasuke rolled his eyes and said. Get some sleep Dobi, we need to find jobs by tomorrow, since I'm guessing we won't find ninja jobs in this town. Sasuke lay down in his sleeping bag. Good night Sasuke. Naruto said before slurping up some instant ramen. Well this is gonna be new, I have to train for the future. Naruto thought as he looked at his best friend. One week later. Naruto, when do you have to be at work? Asked the raven-haired Uchiha. I have to be over at Kaminashi in 10 minutes, I have to go. Naruto said. Over the week Naruto was looking for a job until he found one as a cook in a ramen shop. Coincidentally Naruto learned Ichiraku's recipes given by Tuchi as a gift for winning against pain. Sasuke found an eye patch to cover his Rinnegan eye. I hate how they mix up the Rinne Sharingan and Sasuke's Rinnegan. Honesty. Sasuke just has a special Rinnegan, the Rinne Sharingan is red. Well we have training after you're done. Sasuke said. But why can't I use shadow clones? Naruto whined. What are, wait, that's actually smart. Sasuke interrupted himself. Since when did you have a brain dobi? Naruto got a tick mark. Shut up. Naruto yelled. Naruto crossed his fingers and created a clone. Now go to Kaminashi and work as I train, please. Naruto said, the clone disappearing in a flash of yellow. No not the Hiraishin, he never learned it. Let's get started. Sasuke said, lifting his eye patch, in a Kakashi-like way. 
This became their schedule for the next month till Naruto found Kiba and a redhead entered the shop. This was one of the times the real Naruto was actually in the shop. Oh hello Kiba-san how are you? Oh I see you brought yourself a date. Naruto said respectfully. Sakura literally beat manners into the boy, he now has PTSD from it. No Naruto-san. This is my friend, Rias Gremory. Naruto looked at her and noticed her crimson red hair, almost like blood, her blue eyes, white skin, and a bust that would put Tsunade to shame. Why hello Rias-san, you must be the, bucko, Kiba talked about. Naruto blushed a little when Rias bowed. So tell me about yourself. Naruto spoke up as he tossed the noodles up with precision. Rias then told Naruto about her, life, and it honestly surprised the young man. Naruto-kun, may I ask how old you are? Naruto looked up and stated, my birthday was a month ago, I'm 17 now. Naruto smiled. Wait if you're 17, then why aren't you at school? Kiba chimed in. That. Naruto asked but continued before Kiba or Rias could chime in. That's because I haven't had the time to apply. Naruto said leaning against the counter. Well eat up, your ramen's gonna get cold. Naruto chuckled at Rias's gasp as she realized Naruto already put the bowls there without her noticing. Kiba smirked as he saw Rias's look of surprise. The real reason Kiba brought Rias was to check out his speed and to see if he had a sacred gear that allows such speed. I wasn't even able to sense his hands move, who is this boy? Rias thought. Kiba was having a jealous rage fit in his mind because of such great speeds the ramen chef provided. Naruto-san. After your friends leave, you're free to go. An older man from the back shouted. Thank you, Mr. Akahiko. Naruto shouted back. Well now that I'm unofficially off work, I have to get back to my home. Naruto said as the two finished the delicious ramen. Are you sure you can't stay and talk, Naruto-kun? Rias crossed her arms under her bust. Yeah I'm sorry Rias-san but how about we meet Monday before your school starts and you can help me and my friend register, that way we can talk non-stop. Naruto smiled. Rias seemed to be in deep thought about this until she smiled. Of course Naruto-kun, I'd be happy to help. She smiled at the boy. Well it was great meeting you Rias-san, and Kiba-san I was glad you ended up in one piece by the way, those guys looked like they were gonna kill you. Naruto said, causing Kiba to sweat under Rias's stare. What guys Kiba-kun? Rias asked. Uh, I'll tell you later, bucko. Naruto walked away while waving his hand at the two. Naruto, did you feel the red vixen's powers? Kurama asked. Yeah, it seems Kiba-san told her about my speed, Naruto said. You're a fool for demonstrating your speed, the big fox said. Naruto laughed. I regret nothing, because of that I've been getting huge tips. Naruto said while still laughing. Well the two are following you back home. Kurama commented. It's fine, I'm just a normal kid, right? I will have to make hand signs to Sasuke to let him know. I bet he's loving his new job helping in crime fighting. Naruto said via mind to Kurama. He reminds me of that superhero in that one movie you guys watched, what was it called? Kurama thought. Batman? I see the resemblance between the two. Naruto laughed in his head. Naruto soon arrived at the campsite that now had a generator, a small bathhouse made of stone and seals, and two tents for privacy. Naruto shouted, Oi Teme, I'm back. Sasuke came out of his tent with the latest manga of Dragon Ball Z, and a tomato as if he were about to eat it. That's disgusting dude. Naruto said. Sasuke rolled his eyes and eyed Rias for less than a millisecond and raised an eyebrow at Naruto. Do I even want to know? Naruto mouthed. Let them be. Sasuke shrugged and let Naruto explain somewhat. So Dobi, how's work? Sasuke asked. It was actually interesting. Kiba showed up and brought this really cute girl with him. She had red hair that reminds me of mom. Naruto said. Wait, does she have blue eyes? Sasuke asked. How do you know? Naruto had an idea of where he was going with this. Sasuke and himself have never met Rias till today. Well I heard a rumor that there was this redhead with blue eyes who was dating some boy, maybe it was Kiba. Sasuke said. Nah, she was his bucko, she's pretty though, and looked strong. Naruto said. Speaking of strength. Naruto smiled. Naruto charged at Sasuke who was surprised to say the least. Naruto whispered in his ear, pretend to wrestle me, don't take it seriously, just enough for it to look playful like we're best buddies. 
Naruto and Sasuke soon separated and smashed their hands together pushing each other while smiling and laughing. How about I beat that winning streak, Teme? Naruto shouted. Rias, seeing as everything was normal besides the living situation, decided to call it a day before hearing a whooshing sound coming from the sky. Feathers were everywhere, a fallen angel? Rias thought. What the hell? What's a crow doing over here? Naruto asked Sasuke. Baka, that's those chicken people that swarmed us, this is the reminder that they're still around. Sasuke said, getting off of Naruto who was pinned. Chicken people? Rias asked herself, trying not to giggle at the name the two boys gave the fallen angels. Well I have to settle in for the night, oh and by the way, Rias san said she would help us get into Kuo Academy. Naruto yelled in joy. We haven't been able to get anything stable since our parents both died. Naruto said in a somber voice. What is Naruto trying to do? Naruto looked at Sasuke and gave a discreet wink. When we meet Rias and if we get in, I'll make sure she knows how much this means to us. Naruto looked up to the stars. I can't tell if he's saying this because she's here or if it's the actual truth. Sasuke thought. Well Naruto, I'm sure she'll appreciate it, after all, those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Sasuke said. You're one to talk mister. I want a pedo snake to give me power, and then appear out of nowhere with my father. Naruto grumbled in his mind while a curtain fox was laughing. Naruto and Sasuke were resting, getting ready to meet Rias at the academy. Naruto sat up to find Sasuke leaning against a tree, reading manga. Teme. What you reading? Naruto asked, eyebrow twitching. Sasuke looked up and turned his book and said, It's a book about us apparently. Sasuke said. What are you talking about? Naruto asked. Sasuke just tossed the manga at Naruto and when he saw what was inside his eyes widen. What the hell is this? It showed the conversation between him and Kurama when they first met. Are you saying we are manga characters? Naruto yelled to the sky. Sasuke rolled his eyes. We don't know much about this world, it's probably a coincidence. Sasuke got off the tree and grabbed his manga back. Let's head to school, we may be late if we stay here for longer. Naruto grumbled. Ten minutes later Rias was walking to school with her best friend and her queen, Akeno Himejima. Yo Rias! Naruto shouted as Sasuke walked a few steps behind him. Hello Naruto-kun. Rias said politely as she looked at Sasuke. You must be Naruto's friend. Rias bowed. Sasuke bowed slightly and said, Uchiha Sasuke at your service. Naruto was wide-eyed at Sasuke's behavior. Sasuke just gave a, if you say a thing I'll end you, look. Well this is my friend, Himejima Akeno. Rias stepped aside and when Sasuke and Naruto saw her, they were surprised. Akeno-san? You're Rias's friend? Sasuke asked. Oh hello Sasuke-kun, lovely to see you again. Rias quirked an eyebrow up. Akeno, how do you know him? Well someone was about to attack me a week ago but Sasuke-kun here stopped them before they could do anything, I thanked him and that was it. Akeno had a slight blush. He managed to beat the poor man within an inch of his life. Naruto and Rias looked at their respective friends and thought, you're gonna get to answer my questions whether you like it or not. Sasuke turned to Rias and said, well Rias-san I'm happy to know that we'd be able to attend the academy, you don't know how much we appreciate you doing this. Sasuke said while thinking, what does this girl plan to do? Rias gave Sasuke a soft smile and said, it's my pleasure, I'm always glad to help. Naruto and the rest of the group made their way to the academy while getting glares from the guys and blushes from the girls. Shit what did we get ourselves into? Naruto panicked. Naruto-kun, something wrong? Rias asked, sensing Naruto was tense. Oh it's nothing, I'm just worried about these guys glaring at me. Naruto said, looking Rias in the eye. Sighing, Rias apologized. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, it's because of my reputation, don't mind them. Naruto nodded. It's okay, I can't imagine how you feel getting this attention, it must be annoying sometimes. Naruto rubbed the back of his head while giving a cheeky smile. Akeno agreed, it's fun to see how we have an effect on the boys but it doesn't help the fact that there are some perverts here. Akeno blushed, because she herself was a pervert as well. Well let's get you two registered. Rias said, leading them to the principal's office. Naruto and Sasuke passed the entrance exam with flying colors. Sasuke got a higher score than Naruto, which pissed the blonde off. Teme, 
Damn you. Naruto pouted. Sasuke smirked. I guess I'll always be better than you Dobi. Sasuke taunted. That damn Uchiha brat. Naruto, if you are more stupid than this Uchiha, we'll never get home, take this seriously. Kurama growled. I know that but it's not as if I had a great teacher besides Uruka sensei Naruto sighed, reminding himself of his father figure. Well Naruto-kun, Sasuke-kun, you will be in class 4A with me in Akano. Rias said. Naruto jumped up for joy as Sasuke rolled his eyes and went back to his manga. Naruto was walking to his class with the most beautiful women he's ever seen, and the Teme Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke waited outside of the classroom till it was time. Now guys, we have two new students, they just transferred here from being homeschooled. Sensei Ameno said. Naruto and Sasuke walked in and the class was wide-eyed. Uzumaki-san. Half the class yelled. Oh what's up? I guess you guys heard of me. Naruto asked. Of course we know who you are. You're the cook that beats all the ramen cooks in Kuo. A male student yelled. I didn't know old man Tucci's ramen was that good, psych. I'm kidding, it's the best. Naruto shouted in his head. Calm down brats. Sensei Amato yelled. Anyway, introduce yourselves. Amato rubbed his temples. Teme, you go first. Naruto elbowed Sasuke's arm, causing him to look up from his manga. Whatever, Dobi. Sasuke said as he put his manga in his kanai pouch. Yes they still wear them. Hello everyone. Uchiha Sasuke is my name, please treat me well. Sasuke bowed respectfully. Wow you're boring, Teme. Naruto rolled his eyes. I'm Uzumaki Naruto Datbeo. Naruto covered his mouth after hearing his tick. Sorry, that hasn't happened in a while, hey. Naruto gave a sheepish smile. Anyway it's good to see all of you and meet some more potential friends. Naruto smiled. All the girls had blushes on their faces seeing his smile. Naruto and Sasuke sat next to each other in the back row. Naruto and Sasuke have now started their new lives as high schoolers. Five months later Naruto and Rias walked into class seeing Sasuke reading his manga, he's starting to become like Kakashi sensei if he were on time. Naruto thought. Naruto ran to his desk to set his bag down and ran to Rias. Rias and Naruto have been spending a lot of time at his job and at school. It's gone to the point where he met the rest of Rias's club, and became friends with Kaneko, who could smell foxes from the boy, and sense High's sage chakra. Sasuke was friends with the club, but Akano was the only one he was close to. Sasuke was too engrossed in his literature mainly because there was nothing else to do because school was easy for him aside from the petty rivalry between Naruto and himself. The blonde was always a reminder of him not being alone in the world but that didn't mean he would open up as much, but somehow Akano forced herself into his life after he saved her, which he shockingly didn't mind. Naruto walked back over to Rias, Hey Rias, wanna go to the park after school Sunday? Naruto asked. Sorry Naruto-kun I have to work on club things, maybe Monday though. Naruto was sad but didn't let it get to him. In all honesty he wanted to officially show where he lived, but he knew she already knew. Okay, I have something to show you so I'll be waiting. Naruto smiled brightly, causing Rias to smile back. Naruto looked into her greenish-blue eyes and looked intently into them. You um Naruto-kun? Rias stuttered. Oh sorry I just noticed something amazing about you. Naruto said with an innocent face. Is it my hair? She asked. Huh? Oh no. It is beautiful, but I was talking about your eyes. Naruto said, surprising the red-headed devil. My eyes? She asked. Yeah, you have eyes that I've never seen before, and that's saying something because I've seen crimson red eyes with commas in them. Naruto said, making Sasuke glare at him. Before anything else could happen the teacher entered the room causing the class to get started. Sunday night Naruto was walking around the park trying to get some time away from Sasuke and to find something to occupy himself. Naruto was on his phone watching YouTube on how to help with his cooking. Naruto was sitting on the bench when he saw this couple walk near the fountain. Great another couple wanting to make out there. Naruto rolled his eyes. Kit watch out for that girl. Kurama warned his friend. Okay. Naruto replied, putting his phone in his pocket. Watching the two intently he recognized the boy. He was Issei Hyodo, Jr. and one of the perverted trio. Issei reminded him of Aero Senen so much. Naruto listened and watched the scene deeply. Then he heard the girl speak. Issei-kun. Could I ask for a favor? 
The raven haired girl asked. Sure, I'll do anything you want, Issei said, enthusiastically. Can you die for me? Hearing this, Naruto stood up and was about to move in. I'm sorry, I think I misheard you. What did you say, Yuma chan? Issei rubbed his pinky in his ear. Yuma repeated her words but was louder this time. I asked if you could die for me. Her voice was darker. Before anything could be said from the brown haired boy, Yuma started to transform. Kit, get that boy to safety, Kurama yelled. Naruto saw the woman hold a spear made out of light and threw it. Issei could only stand there and watch as he was about to die. But before the spear hit, it was deflected by a kanai. Who dares? The woman yelled before turning around to find Naruto. Naruto! Issei yelled. What is going on? Issei yelled. Hell if I know Issei Baka. Naruto looked back at the woman with black angel wings. So you're part of the chicken people race. Naruto said, causing Kurama to laugh. Chicken. The woman yelled. You have wings. Therefore you are a chicken person. Naruto explained, causing the woman to get a tick mark. The woman summoned another spear of light, causing Naruto to rush her. As the woman was about to throw it Naruto started to mold his chakra to his hand, making a blue sphere of energy to hover over his hand. The woman threw the spear, which again was deflected by another kanai. Naruto thrusted the ball of chakra as soon as he was close enough. Rasengan. Naruto yelled, pushing the ball deeper in the woman's abdomen, causing her to cough up blood. The woman was thrown 100 feet away from the two boys. Naruto, how the hell did you do that? Issei yelled. I don't know, it just happened. Naruto made up an excuse. Naruto turned to Issei. Now I want to know what the hell a chicken woman was attacking you. Naruto looked serious. How the hell should I know bro? I'm having a panic attack at just the fact I saw some bright stick appear out of nowhere and that my date was a hot busty chick who looks like is into BDSM. Issei exclaimed. Issei widened his eyes as he felt something painful hit his heart. Naruto looked to see a light spear pierce his chest. Issei. Naruto yelled. Naruto turned around to see a hurt busty woman clutch her chest. Naruto could see blood coming out of the wound. The woman was about to make a break for it but Naruto caught up to her. You're not going anywhere. Kurama's voice could be heard from out of Naruto's mouth. Kurama grabbed the woman's leg and forced her down, hitting the ground hard. You think you'll get away from me? That's as a ing joke. Kurama was standing over the fallen angel as he beat her, not holding back his strength. Naruto's body was covered in gold. Naruto stopped his onslaught to turn around to see Rias staring at him. Rias chan? Naruto's voice turned back to normal. Naruto kun? Is that you? Rias replied, taking a step back. Naruto looked at her intensely before looking at Issei, whose breathing was steady. What is going on, Rias chan? Naruto asked her. Dobi. What the hell are you doing? Sasuke yelled, appearing next to him. Taking my anger out on a chicken woman. Naruto shrugged, his body returned to normal. Wait, you mean that fallen angel? Rais pointed at the mutilated fallen. Yeah? How do you know them? Naruto asked, walking up to Issei and feeling his pulse. He's alive. Naruto sighed. Rias? What are you doing here? Naruto asked. I'll explain in the club room tomorrow Naruto-kun. Rias said before her and Issei disappeared via magic portal. So Naruto-kun. Rias spoke in a very serious tone, something Naruto hasn't heard from her. What are you going to do with this information? Naruto just raised an eyebrow. What do you mean Rias-chan? Naruto asked. I have no intentions on hurting any of you guys. Naruto smiled. Mine and Sasuke's sensei once told us, those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum. And I will never betray his words. Sasuke looked up and looked at Akano, which she looked at him as well. He nodded to her that his friend was telling the truth. Bucko, he may be telling the truth. Akano said. I think there is someone you should meet since you were honest, and now I know the reason you all followed me back to our home that one time. Naruto said, causing Rias to tense. You knew? She asked. Come on Rias Chan, if I didn't know you were following me I would have gone to buy more instant ramen and I just wanted to get home because at the time I didn't trust you. Naruto explained, I in no way lied about the conversation between me and the Tem, all of it was real. Naruto said with a sad smile. Ten minutes later, now I need to draw the seal in order for this to work. Naruto said. 
What are these seals supposed to do? Kaneko asked. They'll allow you to enter my mind without locking your soul there. Naruto stated. The group sat in a circle as Sasuke stood behind Akano. Naruto sat down and activated the seals. Inside the seal. Where are we? Kiba asked, looking around. We're in a sewer of some sort. Kaneko smelled foxes coming from one place. Follow me. Naruto said with a serious face. Naruto and Rias's peerage walked to the open area with a giant fox with nine tails freely swinging. The big fox was sleeping. Oi! Wake your lazy ass up Kurama! Naruto yelled. Kayubi! Rias exclaimed. Wait, you know Kurama? Naruto asked. She's talking about a yokai from this world, I can feel her presence and I know she feels mine. Kurama opened his eye at the group. Wait there's another one? Naruto said in excitement. Yeah she is idle though and I assume she is sending what seems to be a two-tailed fox to scope you out. Kurama rose his head. Now Kit, mind explaining what your red-headed vixen is doing here? Kurama asked with a smirk. Baka, she's not mine. Naruto shouted, but that didn't help the blush rushing to her face. Excuse me, Kayubi-sama? Rias asked. It's Kurama, not Kayubi. Kurama growled. My apologies, Kurama-sama. I'm just wondering how you are inside Naruto-kun. Rias requested. That would be because of my father. Naruto said with a content sigh. When Kurama was forced to destroy my village, my father, who was the leader, stopped him and sealed him into me. Naruto started. Rias was surprised to hear Naruto talk about his past, he never wanted to before. And because he was sealed into me I was beaten, ignored, hated, and worse of all. Naruto spoke like it was venom in his mouth making the girls start to tear up. And worse of all, I was raped. Naruto said. Gasps were heard in the corridor. Your own villagers did that to you. What monsters? Rias said. But Naruto raised his hand. Let me finish. It was because of this I wanted to prove myself. With years of trying and saving the village, I was acknowledged and was a hero. Naruto looked at Kurama who sighed. I don't blame you for anything Kurama. Naruto said. I'm happy with my life and if I could, I wouldn't change a thing. I gained friends, family, and better yet, purpose. Naruto said. Naruto was then enveloped in a tight hug. Rias then realized why he looked familiar and why his background was familiar with it. Wait a second. Rias shouted. You're from the manga. How the hell do you even exist? Naruto winced at the volume as did Kurama. Busted. Naruto gave a sheepish smile. You are going to explain that now Naruto-kun. Rias ordered. After Naruto explained his fight with Kagaya, Rias went wide-eyed and said. Naruto we need to get out of this now, I need to show you something. Outside the seal Naruto and everyone woke up to see Sasuke drawing a on Naruto and put Akino's ribbon in a new style, which made her look cuter. Sasuke. Naruto said slowly. Sasuke lifted his bandana. I'm gonna ink kill you. Naruto yelled. Sasuke switched places with a sword, which cut Naruto's hand. Come here and take your punishment like a ing man teme. Naruto was filled with rage. Enough Naruto-kun, come over here. Rias yelled. Naruto, like a machine, flipped a switch and went immediately over to her. Rias summoned a portal and a copy of Naruto. The last appeared and Naruto was gaping at what was in her hand. Naruto and Sasuke walked into a private room and sat there, watching the entire movie. Naruto was tearing up, seeing everyone. Sasuke was impassive. Naruto saw the moment where Hanada confessed her feelings, he saw them kiss, he saw himself one punch a god. At the end of the movie, Naruto looked at the ground to see puddles of tears. You okay Naruto? Sasuke asked. Yeah, I just want to be alone for a while. Naruto got up and in a flash disappeared. Rias stood up to go find him. Rias. If you really do know us then you know how we deal with this. I'm taking this in stride, in all honesty I don't really care, I'm just trying to find a way home for Naruto's sake, I've known about everything, even what his son Boruto, god what a shit name, and his daughter. He just needs a minute to process this. Sasuke said, looking her in the eyes. Rias widened her eyes. You know, for some reason I think I am starting to understand Akano. Rias said. Sasuke raised an eyebrow. What about Akano? He asked. Nothing, not my secret to tell, sorry, Rias said. I'm gonna go comfort him, Rias said before disappearing in a magic circle.
Hey, I know it may not seem like it, but I consider him a brother as much as I do Nisong, Sasuke said to himself. With Naruto Naruto was training with his clones, more like beating the shit out of them. Kagaya you damned me here. Naruto thought to himself, taking out another clone. Naruto-kun. He heard her voice. Rias. Naruto said in a broken tone. Without hesitation, Rias grabbed Naruto and pulled him into the tightest hug he's ever felt. It felt, warm. Naruto slowly raised his hands, wrapping himself around the crimson-haired woman. Naruto began to cry into Rias's shoulder and couldn't stop. I don't know what to do, Rias. I can't find a way back to my friends. Naruto pulled himself off of Rias. There is something I haven't tried but I want Sasuke to be here. And just like that Sasuke appeared in a body fair. Naruto walked up to Sasuke and said, I'm gonna summon a toad to see if they can send a message. Naruto said, causing Sasuke's eyes to widen. We forgot about our summons. Sasuke yelled. Wait, you didn't think of it? Naruto asked with a smug face. Naruto-kun are you going to try to summon Gamakichi? Rias asked. Naruto cocked an eyebrow. You know Kichi. Naruto asked. Well if I am going to be honest Naruto-kun, I kind of know everything about you. She admitted. Wait, you watched me. Naruto referred to the manga and the anime. I will admit, I am kind of obsessed with anime. She said. Wait, you knew about us from the beginning. Naruto yelled. Rias smiled and said. Why do you think I came with Kiba-kun to the ramen shop? Rias asked. I wanted to try Chuki san's ramen myself. Rias beamed. Wait a second. The only reason you were interested in me, was because of Ichiraku ramen? Naruto exclaimed. Well once I heard your name I had to see if Kiba-kun was telling the truth. I did not care for the speed he described. She explained. So you knew about our skills but didn't officially tell us who you really were? Why? Sasuke asked. Well Sasuke-kun, I wasn't really wanting to tell you to be honest because I hear too much, Rias-sama, and I wanted to have friends that treat me equally. She groaned. Seems understandable. Sasuke put a hand on his hip. Well Naruto, get to summoning. He simply said. Naruto bit his thumb and yelled, Kachiyose no jutsu. Naruto, Sasuke, Rias, and Akino stood still, waiting for the Tower of Smoke to clear. Naruto saw. Yo Naruto. Gamakichi stood there in all his might. Gamakichi. Naruto ran and hugged his toad friend. Whoa Naruto, what gives? Gamakichi was dazed at the sudden hug. Gamakichi, there is no time to explain, is there any way to send a message to Kakashi Sensei? Naruto asked. Yeah but why? Wait where are we? I don't sense any chakra. Gamakichi asked. We were separated when we fought Kagaya. Sasuke interrupted. Oh hey Sasuke, wait so you guys are in a different world. Gamakichi clarified, yes. Naruto said simply, dang Gaki that's interesting, yeah try summoning a messenger toad. Gamakichi said, taking out his cigarette. Naruto poured a little chakra into the jutsu, causing a little toad to appear. Here give this to Kakashi sensei please. Naruto gave a small slip of paper. The toad took it and poofed away. Well Naruto it's always great to see you. Next time bring snacks, but good luck. Gamakichi poofed away from the plane of existence. Naruto turned around to find a stunned Rias, Akino and Sasuke talking to each other about school, and Kaneko and Kiba walking into the clearing. So now that we sent Kakashi Sensei a message, I guess it's time to go, Sasuke. Naruto smiled. I'm not going back, Sasuke said. What the hell do you mean, Sasuke? Of course you're coming. Naruto laughed as he slapped his back. No, I'm staying here. Sasuke said. Naruto looked him dead in the eye. Sasuke, you can't be serious, we need to go back to our friends. A, you know one actually got stuck in the Tsukuyomi, Kagaya was going to start it but then got sealed. Naruto, I've been looking for a way to get you back, not me. Sasuke started. I don't want to go back to a place that will either execute me or imprison me plus I've made new connections, new bonds. Sasuke looked at Akino for a second. Naruto sighed, why did it for me? Naruto asked. Sasuke walked up to Naruto and put a hand on his shoulder. Because I know how much everyone else cares about you, you made bonds with everyone and I see it's eating at you. Sasuke said. Naruto looked down till a messenger toad reappeared. 
Naruto saw a scroll and took it. Naruto, I got your message. It's great to hear from you and know you two are alive. Things here have calmed down but everyone thought you were dead. A mass memorial took place and we mourn for your death. But like always the hyperactive knucklehead ninja is alive and refuses to die. I will tell everyone after I send this toad on its way. Don't worry about trying to come home too fast, we need to rebuild before anything. Gotta let you come home to a brand new village. Kakashi. Naruto looked up and smiled. It seems like they aren't ready to deal with me just yet. Naruto laughed as Rias walked up to him and put his arm between her s. Well Naruto-kun seems like Konoha is missing out for the time being. Blushing, Naruto rubbed the side of neck and looked away. Why yeah I guess Rias-chan. He stuttered. Naruto didn't budge because he was too nervous to move. Rias on the other hand was blushing, but kept it hidden. Well let's get back, I need to explain to Isei-kun his situation. Rias said, pulling Naruto. She wasn't going to let go of a character she read about for years, hell, she'll probably start being more possessive. With Yasuska, this power, it's stronger than mine and feels like mine too. Yasaka said to herself in her bed chamber. Mama, a little fox Kyubi girl asked. It's nothing Kuno-chan, let's go eat dinner. Yasaka looked at the direction of the mass amount of power she could feel, it honestly made her uneasy. Back with Naruto. Naruto walked in to find Issei looking at Kaneko's panties as she ate her snack. Senpei, you're such a pervert, she said in a monotone voice. Koko-chan, I'm back, Naruto said. Naruto went behind her and scratched her scalp, causing her to purr slightly. Naruto sat next to Issei and gave him a fist bump. Naruto, I'm surprised to see you. Do you remember the park, I was with that girl and, Naruto raised his hand. Yeah I do. I wasted my time and energy on you so of course I'll remember. Naruto rolled his eyes. That's new Dobi, when did you start to have a good memory? Sasuke taunted. Naruto gained a tick mark, shut the hell up Sasuke Tem. Naruto said before getting a pillow thrown at him by Kaneko. Kitsune, please quiet down. She said, holding her left ear. Sorry Koko-chan, I forget how sensitive your ears get. Naruto blushed in embarrassment. Rias nodded and looked at Issei. Well would you like to know what you're doing here Issei-kun? Rias sat down. Um yes, I get Sasuke-san but why is my boy Naruto here? He asked. Well, have you ever heard of the supernatural? Rias went on to give the speech she gave to Naruto and tried to get him to activate his sacred gear. Now I want you to imagine something powerful, something that makes you feel strong. Rias said. Issei stood up into Naruto's and everyone's surprise, Issei put out his palm and started to use his other hand, trusting it. Are you trying to make that? Naruto asked. Yeah, you share his name so of course you know what I'm doing. Issei said, smirking. Issei did this for a few more seconds and thrusted his hand forward and yelled. Rasengan. Naruto had to close his eyes as a bright red light emanated off Issei's hand. All that for a simple little glove? Sasuke asked. Shut up Sasuke-san, Issei shouted. Although your form was off a little I'm surprised you actually got a result. Naruto said. What the hell do you mean my form was off? Issei sarcastically asked. Let's go outside and I'll show you. Naruto said. Outside, Naruto in front of Issei who didn't have his gear activated. Alright Issei, show me how you do a Rasengan. Naruto put his hands on his hips. Wait we went out here for a friggin anime move. Naruto nodded, Issei muttered, look like him and act like him, hell I wouldn't be surprised if you really were him. Issei repeated his action but this time he looked like he was making a Rasenshuriken. Now activate your gear when you attempt to do it. Naruto crossed his arms. Futon. Razan's hurricane. Issei threw an imaginary shuriken and activated his boosted gear. Naruto gained a smirk when Issei looked at him. Not bad but I could do better. Naruto said. Oh yeah try it you head. Issei yelled. Um Issei-kun, you should step back. Rias said. Oh come on Rias-sama, he can't be that strong. Issei said. Oh was he in for an awakening. Naruto started to mold his chakra, creating a blue sphere in his hand. T T T T T that's that. Issei couldn't comprehend what was going on. Naruto started to add his wind element into the jutsu, causing it to make the sound of cutting wind. 
Naruto looked up at the sky and shouted, Futon, Razan's hurricane. Naruto threw the jutsu, making everyone look up. Naruto turned around to see Issei passed out from shock, Akino had a blush thinking of the destructive power it could give off, Sasuke deadpanned at him, Kaneko had both eyebrows raised, and Kiba looked shocked. Whoops, I may have overdone it a bit. Naruto gave a sheepish laugh. Well Naruto-kun, I wouldn't expect Konoha's most unpredictable ninja to be different. Rias said, kissing his cheek. Rias-chan, Naruto backed away, what was that for? Naruto's face was as red as her hair. So you're not a pervert like Kakashi-sensei? Rias asked, tilting her head. No, Naruto's face turned so red that a certain Hyuga girl would be jealous. I'm just playing with you Naruto-kun. Rias said, looking a little disappointed. Is everything all right? Naruto whispered. I'll tell you about Naruto-kun, just not right now. Rias responded. One month later, over the month Naruto finally admitted to Rias that he had feelings for a while and to his surprise, so did she. She said that she knew everything about him and still cared about him the same, if he was gonna be honest, it weirded him out, till he realized that she was an otaku and most likely read all of his manga. Issei met a cute nun named Asia when she was looking for the church. When Issei told he met her again, Rias slapped him. She told him not to go to the church again. Issei didn't listen and went with Kiba, Kaneko, and Naruto who knew the plan wasn't going to work for the fallen angels. A, U. Same events in canon. Naruto and Sasuke also bought a new house because of how much Naruto and Sasuke had made. Since they bought the house Rias and Akino had come over and the peerage had used it for a couple of meetings. Naruto had gotten used to everything surprisingly quickly, he also kept sending letters daily to Kakashi and Konoha. Kakashi became Hokage a few days after Naruto got in touch. Kakashi officially assigned the two for an S-rank mission to stay there and report the finding from the new world. Rias was thrilled that Naruto could stay but felt weary that Naruto was gaining the attention of her brother. When Naruto met Lucifer they became friends almost instantly. Naruto, with his carefree attitude, gave little mind to the glare Grafia was giving him. Naruto had told Lucifer that he would protect Rias and her peerage no matter what. Well Naru, let's just hope you can keep that word. Lucifer said before him and Graphia teleported away. Naruto looked at a blushing Rias. Your brother seems cool. Naruto gave a cheeky grin. Naruto, I'm heading over to Akino's for the night. Sasuke said, having a bag in his hand. Naruto being the idiot paid no mind to it and said. Alright, tell Akino I said hi Tem. Naruto shouted at the retreating Uchiha. So when do you have to get home? Naruto asked. Rias smirked at him and said, can I spend the night here? Naruto blushed and thought. Rias-chan and I are in the same bed. Naruto could just see the activities they would do. Hesitantly, Naruto grabbed Rias and picked her up bridal style, making Rias sport a blush on her cheeks. Well rias Heim, it seems you're the one blushing. Naruto growled. Baka, don't tease me. Rias pouted. Naruto just chuckled. Consider this payback for what you've been doing to me. Naruto said before closing the door to his room. Naruto put Rias on the bed before putting on his PJs. Well as much as I would love to tease you back, I'm kind of tired so let's head to bed. Rias said, looking at Naruto's bare chest with a little drool coming out of the corner of her mouth. Naruto-kun is ripped. Naruto had a lean build to him but had some defined muscles to him. It was as if Kami herself sculpted him from stone. Naruto went under the covers and waited for Rias to return to the bathroom, where she went to change. Rias opened the door revealing a see-through nightgown which would probably be thrown off by her. Lemon scene, W-A-R-N-I-N-G. Wow, that looks great on you. Naruto said, blushing madly. Oh Naruto-kun, you know you don't have to hold back. Rias said in a sing-song voice. What do you mean? Naruto nervously asked. Rias grabbed Naruto's hand and pressed it on her. You can touch me if you want, unless you're not attracted to me. Rias moved away. Of course I'm attracted to you Rias-chan. Naruto grabbed her arm, stopping her from moving further. I've been attracted to you for a long time, hell I had no idea what I was feeling till I googled it. Naruto said. Naruto wasted no time. Naruto smashed his lips against hers. Rias reciprocated the kiss, deepening it. 
Rias had given Naruto her first kiss the night he confessed to her. Naruto had been a really good kisser according to Rias. Naruto kissed Rias with a passion she hasn't seen before. She had always teased him but when it came to actual experience, she was shy. Naruto flipped Rias on her back, pinning her on the bed. I love you, Rias-chan, Naruto said, causing Rias to go wide-eyed. Naruto just said he loved her. She couldn't answer as his tongue invaded her mouth, the two wrestle for control. Naruto let go of Rias's arms and fondled her bountiful s. Rias let a moan escape her mouth as Naruto's hand sank into her pillowy. Naruto's right hand slid down to her waist and grabbed it firmly. Naruto released the kiss, gasping for air, and saw Rias's chest rise due to her breathing hard. Naruto-kun, Rias gasped. Naruto let his hand slide further down till she could feel her wet. Naruto started to touch her as he went back to kissing. Naruto inserted his finger and felt her folds wrap around it. Rias moaned Naruto's name, Naruto-kun. Rias could feel his finger go deeper as he pulled it out quickly after. Whimpering, Rias started to grind her against Naruto's hand. Na Naruto-kun, I'm, I'm gonna come. Rias said quietly, smirking. Naruto moved his hands away as he moved his lips closer to her. Naruto could smell her juices. Naruto lapped them up, causing Rias to tense up. Naruto-kun, don't, I'll come hard if you do that. Rias covered her eyes. Not caring, Naruto inserted his tongue into her. She came almost instantly. Quote exclamation mark. I love you too, Naruto-kun. She screamed as she came into his mouth. Rias was panting. She never felt anything like that before and she wasn't prepared for it. Naruto looked at Rias who had a blissful smile. Well I'm glad I could give you this pleasure Rias-chan. Naruto said softly. Rias looked at him and said, How about HNNN I return the favor? Rias said, ignoring the post-orgasm she just had. Rias got on her knees and untied the strand that was keeping his pants up. His pants fell and Rias's chin was hit with a meaty smack. Rias looked in amazement at the size Naruto had. Naruto looked to have a stick of meat that put all the devils to shame. Naruto's was thick, veiny, and heavy. Rias looked at him and asked, How big is it? Rias looked a little scared. It's 13 inches. Naruto shrugged as if it didn't mean anything. Rias grabbed the base of his and started to the shaft in the head. Rias saw that Naruto wasn't looking and put an enchantment in her mouth and throat. Just because it wouldn't fit normally didn't mean she would give up just yet. Rias put her lips at the head, Naruto could feel her breath on it. Rias started to swallow his slowly. Naruto could only grunt at the pleasure she gave him. Rias had been able to five inches before she gagged, but she still went forward. Rias bobbed her head as she started to swallow more and more cock slowly. In the span of a few minutes his cock felt like it was in her stomach. Rias, you got all of it, Naruto said in astonishment. Rias took his cock out and said, no wonder that Hayuga liked you hee hee. Naruto went wide-eyed at what she said. The Byakugan could see through things. Dam didn't know she was a pervert. Naruto picked Rias up, kissing her as he pinned her on the bed. Naruto-kun, Rias moaned. Naruto sat on Rias's stomach, smacking his uzumaki meat in between her flesh bags. Rias knew what he wanted, she pushed her s, trapping his in between. Naruto started to thrust his in between her s till he was about to come. Rias, I'm almost there. Naruto grunted. Rias heard this and stopped. You aren't coming unless it's inside me. Rias, I'm fine, she wasn't fine, I'm on birth control, she was not, but she decided not to tell him. I'm sorry Naruto-kun I love you but this is the only way to cancel the contract. Rias thought. Naruto aligned himself along her entrance. Naruto slowly pushed himself in, feeling her walls expand ever so slightly. Ow Naru-kun, Rias screamed in pleasure and pain. Naruto-kun, it's my first time, can we go easy? Rias whimpered, of course Rias Heim, Naruto took his member out slowly and pushed it back in, he could feel the barrier that separated her virginity and adulthood. Naruto pushed deeper, breaking it instantly. Rias whimpered for a few seconds, getting used to the pain till all she could feel was pure, orgasmic, pleasure. Rias started shaking her hips, indicating she was ready to continue. 
Naruto pulled out and thrusted most of his cock onto her till he could feel himself inside her womb. Rias moaned as she came on Naruto's. Feeling her walls tighten, Naruto decided to thrust even harder. Rias's eyes went to the back of her head, her tongue open as she screamed with no sound escaping her throat. Rias could feel Naruto pulse inside her and that's when decided to strike. Oh you like how my tight little devil milks your. I can feel it, come inside me Naruto-kun. Rias said as Naruto hit his breaking point and with one last, deep stroke, Naruto shot what felt like a bucket of cum inside her. Lemon scene end, sorry again. Naruto plopped down beside Rias and could see she was exhausted. Wow Rias-chan, that was amazing. Naruto said. Naruto could only hear light snores escape from his heim. Good night, I love you Rias-chan. Naruto kissed his red-headed devil and fell asleep. Two weeks later, Rias held up a pregnancy test in her hands. She had been vomiting for the past few mornings and bought a pregnancy test, knowing what the results would be. Positive, Rias was overjoyed. Naruto had gotten her pregnant and she could be free with him. But how will she tell him? Two days later, Rias had thrown up a few times throughout the week but has hidden it from everyone well. Naruto noticed something was off however. Hey Rias-chan, you alright? He asked. Yeah I'm fine Naru-kun don't worry about it. She kissed his cheek. Naruto wasn't buying any of that. You know you can tell me anything Rias-chan, I'll listen to anything you say. Rias looked away, as if she was ashamed of something. Naru-kun. Naruto turned his head to face her. Yes, he asked. Will you love me no matter what? Rias asked. Of course Rias-chan, why would you ask me something like that? Naruto grew concerned for his red-headed lover. Kit, I can feel a chakra signature in the vixen's stomach. Kurama said. Wait what, how, the only way that's possible is if, Naruto didn't finish the thought when Rias spoke up. Rias hid her face in shame, not willing to look him in the eye. Rias, Naruto said in a firm voice. Naruto-kun, I'm pregnant. Rias stated, Naruto sat there, frozen, not able to think of anything but what Rias said. Rias-chan, is pregnant. Naruto stood up and looked at Rias's stomach. You're pregnant. Rias nodded, and you're the father. Naruto started to tear up. I'm gonna be a father. Naruto whispered. Rias looked up and nodded. Naruto threw his arms around her, enveloping her in a bone-crushing hug. I'm gonna be a father, Dadbeo. Naruto screamed while crying tears of joy. An hour later, Naruto had his head against Rias's stomach, feeling the chakra signature it was giving, it was faint, but it was there. How far along are you? Naruto asked. About one month. Rias ran her hands through his soft golden hair. I thought you were on birth control. Naruto moved his head. I thought I was till I saw I had forgotten a few days later. Why didn't you tell me Rias-chan? Naruto asked. Because at the time something clouded my judgment, she said. Naruto looked at her and asked, What do you mean? Rias looked away. Rias, Naruto ordered, There is something I haven't told you, Naruto-kun. Rias said, causing Naruto to sit up. What's wrong? He asked. Rias bit her lip before blurting it out. I'm engaged to someone. This announcement shocked Naruto to his core. This pregnancy will break the engagement. She finished. Naruto looked like someone killed his parents in front of him, again. I said I was sorry about that damn it. Shut up Kurama stop interrupting the story. Naruto stood up and started to walk to the door. Naruto-kun, where are you going? He didn't respond. Naruto-kun, she ran after him and grabbed his hand. Naruto could see the look of betrayal on his face as he was crying. Let go, Rias. She froze. Naru-kun, please, she pleaded. You betrayed my trust Rias, you used me so you didn't have to marry someone you didn't like. Naruto said as he pulled his hand from her grasp. I just need some space right now. He walked out of the house, leaving her on her knees, crying. With Naruto, how could she do this to me? I trusted her, Naruto was punching a tree. Naruto, that devil girl does care about you. No if she cared about me then she wouldn't have lied to me. Naruto yelled before blowing the tree away. Naruto fell to his knees. There's no point staying here anymore Kurama. Naruto said. Like hell brat, you're just going to abandon your kit. 
Kurama yelled. Naruto's eyes widened. The child, Kurama you're right, I forgot about them. Naruto stood up. I don't think I can forgive Rias for doing this to me but I'll still be there for my child. Naruto said with confidence. So this is where you have been. Sasuke appeared. Did Rias send you? Naruto asked. Yashi yeah, wanted to apologize for something although I'm not sure what for. Sasuke put him hands in his pockets. She's pregnant. Naruto looked dead into Sasuke's eyes. Sasuke's jaw dropped right then and there. She's what? Sasuke yelled. And she's engaged to someone, who, I don't know. Sasuke nodded. Akino-chan said something about an engagement, I was gonna tell you but you went missing. Sasuke said. Well she looked depressed when she asked me to look for you, hell, I've never seen Sakura that upset. The two laughed a little at how their fallen teammate would act if Sasuke denied her a date. Fine, I think it's best for myself and for the child if I listen to her side of the story. Naruto said. With Rias, Akino was comforting Rias while she was crying into her shoulder. I shouldn't have done that to him Akino, what is wrong with me? She couldn't stop the tears. You did what you thought was best, Rias. Akino rubbed her back, do you think he'll forgive me? She asked. You know him better than anyone, what do you think? She asked. I don't know, since he's been here, his attitude has changed. She said, he's been acting like his future self from Boruto and it's scaring me. She said. Well be patient with him Rias, just explain your situation and tell him your true feelings. Akino said to her best friend. I'm home. They heard Naruto's voice. Rias stood up and cleaned herself up. Naruto walked into the living room with his eyes to the floor. Sasuke said you wanted to say something. Naruto asked Rias. Rias ran and hugged Naruto. I'm so sorry Naruto-kun, I didn't mean to hurt you, I really do love you and those feelings won't change, ever. She cried. Naruto's hands twitched, he wanted to hug her back but he wanted to test her. Rias do you remember the night I confessed to you? He asked. She nodded. It was one of the happiest moments of my life. She said. Mine too. He said. Were you engaged at that time? Did you care about him? He asked. I was forcefully engaged to a pervert who wanted me only for my body, but you, you made me feel different. She started. Every time I messed with you and teased you, you wouldn't get mad. When I showed you my room you didn't judge my anime addiction even though you had every right to since you saw I had stuffed plushies of you. Naruto sweat dropped but she continued. When I would get mad or upset you would comfort me. Naruto, I love you. She proclaimed, making the blonde smile. Naruto pushed her away from him. Naruto-kun. Naruto wiped her tears away, sweeping his thumb on her cheek. Rias you may have hurt me. Rias looked down before Naruto lifted her chin, getting a kiss from her lover. But I still love you. Naruto said. I'm so sorry Naruto-kun. I'll never hurt you again, I promise. Rias threw herself into Naruto's chest. Naruto snaked his arms around his busty redhead and kissed the top of her head. I'll hold you to that, Naruto said. Naruto smiled and kissed his lover's head, causing her to stir. Rias's half-open eyes cutely yawned, morning Naru-kun. Rias looked into his blue orbs. Good morning Rias-chan, sleep well, Naruto said while brushing a strand of hair off her face. Rias nodded while before sitting up. What time is it? Rias asked. From what I could tell it's almost time for school. Naruto sat up and walked over to the closet. Rias stared at his sculpted back and defined muscles. Rias got a minor nosebleed before wiping her nose. Does anyone like what they see? Naruto smirked when Rias jumped when she heard Naruto's voice behind her. Naru-kun. Naruto's shadow clone was smiling at her as Rias blushed profusely. Naruto kissed her cheek as he put on a shirt. Didn't take you for someone to be so shy, Rias Chan, Naruto purred in her ear, making steam come out. Shut up, Baka, she threw a pillow at him, which he caught. Teasing aside, let's get ready for school, we need to study for the exam. Naruto said as Rias nodded and started to get herself cleaned up from their activities from last night. Naruto went downstairs to find Sasuke with bags under his eyes. Whoa. What happened to you? Naruto asked. You Naruto. Sasuke said, simply. What did I do? The blonde asked. Quick flashback. 
Sasuke was holding a pillow over his head. Oh Naruto-kun, harder, the mother of your child. Sasuke screamed into his pillow while blushing. Quick flashback end. Naruto was rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. Sorry about that Sasuke. Naruto laughed. Go yourself. I'm going to meet Akino. Sasuke stood up and washed his dishes. Speaking of Akino, Sasuke-kun. Rias walked into the kitchen. What about it? He asked. What is your relationship with my queen? Rias asked. Sasuke blushed slightly. We um. Sasuke wasn't making eye contact. She's my girlfriend. Naruto was slack-jawed. You aren't gay Sasuke. Naruto yelled. Sasuke just flipped him off and walked out. You obviously haven't watched Boruto have you? Rias took Naruto's hand as they left to go to school. That's Naruto Baka and Rias Sama. What the hell is that bastard doing with Rias Haim? Rias Samas are getting bigger by the day. Due to the pregnancy, they really were. Naruto heard the jealous whispers and glares being sent his way and it was pissing him off. Naruto kun is with Rias Sama. They look so cute together. Rias Sama is so lucky. Indeed she was. Rias heard the whispers and the looks they were getting were mixed with admiration and jealousy. Naruto and Rias walked throughout the halls and went to their respective classes, kissing while saying goodbye to each other. With Naruto, Naruto walked in and was instantly punched in the face by Motohama. Ow what the dude, the blonde stood up and glared at the brown haired boy. Shut yo ass up punk. What do you think you're doing with Rias? Issei glared at Motohama. Motohama, we've been going out for months now, we just decided to make it public. Now, Naruto grabbed Motohama and Matsuda. Would you two care to explain why I was punched in the face? Naruto got a hand on his shoulder which caused him to turn and see Issei. Please put them down Naruto. Naruto sighed and threw them unceremoniously into their seats. Thanks, Issei said. Issei walked past Issei but not before Naruto whispered, Rias chan and I have something to tell everyone. Rias looked at the retreating back of his friend. With Rias, Rias sama, are you going out with Naruto? Asked a female classmate. Why yes, yes I am. Rias gave an innocent smile while chuckling cutely. In the club room, Issei, Kiba, Akino, Asia, Kaneko, and Sasuke were talking about school-related things before Naruto and Rias walked in. Yo, Naruto said nonchalantly, what's up, Naruto? Issei nodded. Naruto and Rias stood behind her desk. Naruto took a deep breath and said, to those who don't know, Rias and I are, Naruto was interrupted as a vortex of fire appeared. You bastard, the tall man yelled before firing a phoenix flame at Naruto, who just stood there and took it. Gah, that was strong, Naruto coughed blood, who the do you think you are to do that to my betrothed? The man was pissed. Naruto stood up slowly, so you're the er who forced Rias into that pitiful marriage. Naruto wiped his mouth, getting rid of the blood. Naruto looked at the man with pure hate. Who, the, are you? Naruto bursted into Kyubi chakra, this man was not worth sage of six path mode. What is this power? The man thought. I am Riser Phoenix, heir to the Phoenix clan. The man was full of himself, and Naruto hated people who were like that. I can almost taste the arrogance coming off of you. Naruto's teeth became fangs, his nails grew, and red chakra seeped around him. I should kill you where you stand. Naruto growled. Enough Naruto-sama. Grafia appeared via teleportation circle. Grafia sama you can't be serious. Naruto returned back to normal. I'm sorry Naruto-kun. Rias hugged Naruto, which pissed Riser off. Naruto, being the alpha G he is, grabbed Rias's ass and kissed her in front of Riser. You insolent fool. Riser charged a fire spell which was cancelled out immediately by another force. The sound of 1000 birds was heard. Sasuke-kun. Akino gasped, you dare fire a spell in this club room filled with my friends and let's not forget, your fiancé. Sasuke yelled, that whore is tainted, she no longer has any use for me. Riser spat on the groan before turning to leave. The room began to flood with key, killer intent and was aimed at Riser. Naruto let go of Rias and clenched his fists, his blonde bangs covering his eyes. What did you just call Rias-chan? Naruto asked in a dangerous voice. Riser smirked and said, I called her a tainted who, Naruto didn't let him finish. 
In pure speed Naruto grabbed the demon and was immediately outside. The blonde was beyond pissed. Naruto slammed Riser into the ground and beat him Didera style. Grafia saw only a blur and Riser and Naruto were gone. Naruto's gonna kill that guy. Issei said. Where did Naruto Senpei go? Kiba asked. Kaneko looked throughout the distance and saw smoke from what looked like an impact. There he is, she said in her usual monotone. Naruto's knuckles were bleeding, but the man was laughing at him. Naruto could see Riser's wounds heal as fast as his, pissing him off even more. Naruto gathered chakra in his palm. Futon. Recentury, Naruto was about to throw the jutsu but Rias shouted for him to stop. Naruto-kun. Naruto froze causing the man to make a flame sword and stab Naruto through the chest. Naruto spit up blood and looked down. Everyone looked on in horror as Riser yelled, You bastard, die, and pulled his sword out. Rias ran directly to her love, and could see life fading from his eyes. There's your love you ing whore, Riser said before leaving in a fire vortex. Asia, Rias shouted, I'm on it. Asia started to try to heal Naruto's wound but it wasn't working. Graphia looked and realized, he used phoenix flames, the wound won't heal. Rias started to cry, no Naruto-kun, please, don't leave me. Rias hugged Naruto as he was choking on his blood. R. Rias-chan, Naruto weakly said, Naru-kun, save your energy. Rias said, wiping his tears. I'm sorry Haim, that I cough I won't be able to be there for you anymore. Naruto was losing strength. Rias was holding her love crying while he was dying in her arms. Naruto's eyes became dull, losing life. Naruto-kun, I'm sorry, it's my fault. Rias caressed his scarred cheek. Naruto's hand, holding hers. I love you Ri, as. Naruto's hand was drifting off of Rias's own. Naruto-kun, Rias's eyes widened. Naruto-kun, Rias screamed. With Sasuke, Sasuke was slowly making his way to where Naruto threw Riser. Sasuke smirked at the thought that the man wouldn't be able to touch Naruto. Then he heard it, Naruto-kun, Sasuke's eyes widened, Sasuke instantly made a break for where the commotion came from. It took two minutes for Sasuke to make it to the scene. What he saw horrified him. Rias was lying in a pool of Naruto's blood, sobbing while holding a limp Naruto. Sasuke felt his world crumble. No, Sasuke whispered, he ran to the red head. Did that bastard do this? Sasuke demanded. Rias didn't answer, only nodded. Sasuke ripped his bandana off and opened a portal to the underworld with his Rinnegan. This uses too much chakra than I'd like but that doesn't matter. Sasuke walked through the portal and arrived just in front of Riser. Naruto's mindscape. Who are you? Kurama demanded. Relax young Kitsune, I am here to help you save this boy. The woman said as she put her hand to his dying body. I summon thy friend, Shinigami himself, let this young man be reborn to make peace. The woman finished her enchantment. The mindscape all of a sudden bursted in light, blinding Kurama. Arg, what are you doing? When Kurama opened his eyes he saw the spirit of the Shinigami, taking a bath. Will you get your lazy ass out of that tub shin? The woman yelled, surprising the fox demon. What the hell? The death god unceremoniously fell as the tub blinked out of existence. This boy is dying, I wish you to return his soul. She said. Shin turned his head and widened his eyes. Kayubi, I thought I sealed you away. Kurama realized it was the same Shinigami that sealed him into Naruto. We are in his mindscape Shinigami-sama. Kurama said. Now Kami, what the hell do you think you're doing here? Shin scolded his godly friend like a child. Baka, now's not the time for that. She yelled as they noticed Naruto's mindscape collapsing in on itself. Uh very well Kami-chan. Shin pulled out his blade and cut a hole through space and time, retrieving Naruto's soul. I the death god here by blah blah blah, take your damn soul back mortal and be healed of your pathetic wounds. Shin threw the blonde soul back into his body and healed him. You owe me a sacrifice. Shin said before disappearing. I must see to it that this child becomes powerful enough to handle any threat, so I will release some of my power into him, making him a god of foxes. Kami said before looking at Kurama as her hand glowed with power. What the hell are you doing to me? Kurama yelled. Real world, 
Rias was sobbing into a dead Naruto, and couldn't do anything. Bushu. Hiba put a hand on her shoulder. I'm so sorry, Akino said. All of a sudden Naruto power shot around him, covering him in holy and devil magic and chakra. Rias was thrown back but Kiba caught her just in time. What the hell is going on? Kaneko yelled. Naruto. Rias shouted. Naruto was levitating off the ground as his power grew exponentially. This power was higher than an ultimate class devil. Naruto started to change his form. He no longer held his whisker marks, but held a strong, regal chin line. Naruto grew to an astounding six feet two, and grew nine fox tails and fox ears. Naruto's eyes shot open and yelled, causing his power to explode in light. When the light died down everyone saw Naruto wearing a red and black G.I. and fingerless gloves with the kanji of Kami on them, with his nine crimson red fox tails coming out through the back, and his furry fox ears twitching. Naruto examined himself. What the hell happened to me? His voice was almost as deep as Kurama's. Kurama, Naruto thought. No response. Wake up Kurama this is serious. Naruto couldn't feel his fox partner's chakra, in fact he couldn't see the seal. What the hell happened to me? Naruto yelled. Naruto-kun. He heard a voice, as he turned around he was glomped into a mighty tight hug. Rias-chan, what happened? Naruto asked. Rias couldn't say anything as she cried into his chest. Akino walked up to them and said, Naruto-kun it's great to see you alive and well but Sasuke-kun went after Riser through that. She pointed at Sasuke's portal that was forced to stay open. That Tem, his head is mine, Naruto growled. Rias-chan stay here and protect yourself and the baby, I'll be right back. Naruto sat her down and entered the portal. With Sasuke, Sasuke was dodging fire spells coming from Riser. He was having a surprisingly hard time, due to him opening a portal to the underworld, he wasn't at full power. Damn you er, Sasuke howled his battle cry. Riser shot a phoenix flame at Sasuke but he couldn't see it, causing him to get thrown back. Riser appeared in front of Sasuke but was shot back instantly from a powerful kick. You shithead think you can just kill me and get away with it. A powerful voice boomed through the air. Sasuke looked up to find Naruto, with tails. Naruto walked up to Sasuke and held out his hand. Let's beat this guy, Tem. Naruto said. Sasuke took his friend's hand and stood up. Naruto gave a little chakra to Sasuke, causing his pools to replenish rather quickly. Consider this payback for the ramen. Naruto said, HN, don't think you're all that now that you look like Kurama. Sasuke smirked, I look like him. Naruto sighed, what the hell, I thought I ended you. Riser yelled, oh I haven't forgotten you, you KFC chicken finger looking ass man child. A certain Nako would be proud of the roast. Riser just got more and more pissed. So be it, I'll just kill you again then. Naruto didn't have time to process his next thought, Sasuke already charged up a Chidori and in a streak of lightning launched himself towards Riser. Riser dodged Sasuke's Chidori, barely. Naruto started to churn his chakra to make a Rasengan. It looked purple and red. Shit how the hell can I make a Bijudama? I was trying to make a Rasengan. Naruto just ran at Riser who had his back turned to him and in a fraction of a second Naruto was right behind his back. Riser. Naruto yelled. Riser turned around to be choked by Naruto. Biju Dama Rasengan. Naruto shoved the jutsu into Riser's stomach. Sasuke saw the pure hate Naruto was showing for the man. Riser was sent to the afterlife in an instant. Who's next? Naruto yelled. Naruto saw Sasuke and all of a sudden. Naruto's GI turned back into his normal outfit. Naruto's tails morphed into one pig fluffy tail along his ears staying the same. Sasuke was dazed by the amount of power Naruto now held. Dobi, what happened to you? Uchiha muttered. I don't know Tem, one second I'm dying then next I wake up with a tail. Naruto comically threw his hands everywhere. Well, we need to head back to Naruto, Rias and everyone has worried enough for us. Naruto nodded. It was good for me to let off some much needed steam though. Naruto said. Halt. Yelled a guard. Shit we gotta go. Sasuke yelled. Using the Rinnegan, Sasuke and Naruto jumped through the portal. With Rias and everyone else. Akino was holding her best friend's shoulders, trying to comfort her. They'll be back, Rias. Just after she said that the two men jumped from a portal. 
Naruto-kun, Sasuke-kun. The two women yelled as they ran to their lovers. Rias tackled Naruto to the ground whereas Akino pulled Sasuke into her massive bust. Naruto-kun, thank God. Rias whimpered. Rias-chan, I'm sorry for worrying you. Naruto said. Uzumaki-sama. Grafia said. What happened with Phoenix-sama? Naruto's face went from soft to stone cold in an instant. I killed the Ur, Naruto crudely said, causing everyone to gasp. I see, although you were within your right to do so, the elder devils will be displeased. Grafia said, Sasuke rolled his eyes, that reminds me of how Gigi would say with the council. Naruto stifled a giggle, I could care less of what they think of me. Naruto said, getting back on track. I did what I had to do for everyone here, especially Rias Haim. Naruto wrapped his hand around her waist. Very well, Sirzak Sama will want to speak with you soon. Grafia bowed, and I will gladly speak with Ni Chan. Naruto winked at Grafia, confusing her. Till then, Uzumaki Sama. Grafia disappeared in a teleportation circle. Naruto turned to everyone, who was looking at him like he grew a second head. What? Naruto asked. Naruto Senpei, why do you have a tail? Kaneko asked, I don't really know that myself, but I keep getting the strong scent of cats from you. Naruto said, sniffing the air, I've smelt foxes from you since day one, which is probably from the Kyubi in your stomach. Kaneko poked his stomach curiously. But since you woke up, your smell has changed. Kaneko looked at Naruto, you're a yukai, she asked, Kaneko chan, Naruto isn't from this world there's no way he can, yeah I am. Naruto interrupted Issei, I can remember things, things that I've never experienced, I only know one being who has. Naruto's eyes widened at what happened to him. Kurama must have merged with me. Naruto said, making his one big fluffy tail burst into nine tails. Rias decided to touch one out of pure shock and curiosity. H.N. Naruto tensed and blushed, P please Rias Chan, it's sensitive. Naruto said, oh I'm sorry Naru-kun. Rias took her hand off of his tail as it swished around. So what now bro? Issei asked, I need to go to Kyoto. Naruto said, Rias instantly knew why but still decided to ask. Why Kyoto? Naruto looked at her with a lust for travel. Kurama wanted to go there for some reason and now I want to, do you know what's over there? Naruto asked. Rias nodded. That's a place where Yukai live and are mixed around with humans. Rias explained. Ah I see, Kurama just wanted to be with his own kind. Naruto narrowed his eyes. I will go there tomorrow and explore and see if what you say is true. Naruto's crimson slits looked into Rias's blue orbs. Now then Vixen, I have certainly missed you. Kurama spoke through Naruto which at first scared the hell out of everyone. Naruto-kun, Rias asked. It seems that women mended our consciousness together. Kurama said. Rias then realized who she was talking to. Kurama-kun, what woman? Rias asked. In Naruto's mind a woman by the name of Kami summoned Shinigami-sama to save the Gaki's life. Then when he did, the woman did something to us and because of her power, we were molded together, and last but not least, everyone was waiting for what he was going to say next. My tales are not sensitive. Kurama roared causing everyone to face fall. The gaki is just a. Everyone just sweat dropped. Oi, what the hell happened? Naruto shouted. Why was I talking like that? Naruto looked at Rias for an explanation. You're freaking dense Naruto. Issei said, patting Naruto on the shoulder. Don't worry about it. Rias spoke up. We all are leaving for Kyoto. Naruto's eyes widened. Wait, why is everyone else going? Naruto asked. There's a curtain Kyubi I need to speak with. Rias said, making Naruto even more confused. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.